Okay, so in our last video, we got to the stage where we created our own um, pause menu. When you hit the escape key on the keyboard, uh, as you can see here, we hit escape to pause the game. Um, this will also stop whatever music we have in the background. We can hit escape again to um, get back into the game. And what we're going to do now is focus on having our own custom preloader. So as you saw there, this is the Flixel one. We're going to go ahead and create our own from scratch. So let's do that. Let's come into here, create a new file called preloader.hx. Yeah. All right. So currently, this is how the preloader is loaded. So we have Flexible System um, FLX preloader. So let's see how that looks like at the moment, actually. So inside here, let me let me just get that running. So we're going to go, go class preloader extend and this I think was called FLX preloader FLX preloader there you go so we're not actually going to use this extend we just want to see what that currently looks like so as you can see here this FLX preloader extends the FLX base preloader and a lot of the syntax in here is kind of OpenFL, so it's not really flex source syntax. Um, and this, this is a bit different from what we're used to. It's different from what I'm certainly used to. So I'm getting a bit out of my comfort zone, but let's go ahead with this. Okay, so we don't need this one. We need the FLX base preloader instead, so we can get rid of this line. Cool. Let's have a look at the FLX base preloader. And as you can see, from this line, not this line, sorry, this line here, you'll see that if it's not the web, the preloader gets skipped. So it only shows if it's a web target, like I explained in the previous video. So if you're working with, uh, I don't know, Mac, native, Windows, or uh, Android, iOS, this preloader won't show. So this is for web specific, and let's get started. Um, first of all, let's create a constructor. So public function new, that's not how you spell function. This is how you spell it. And from the get-go, you will see that the base preloader constructor, um, is this it? Uh, the, the base preloader constructor, which should be, no, we don't want this one. Here, there we go takes in two arguments, it takes in the minimum display time and the allowed URLs. So we're just going to use this one for now. So let's take in that, which would be a float, um, defaulted to zero, sorry, not nine, zero. And we want to have that to be two seconds. So this is the minimum time the, the preloader will show for. Um, and this is the allowed URL. So to the URLs, you only want the game to work on. So this is, I don't know, useful for, for certain site basically no one, no one can take your game and put it somewhere else and this is useful for if you have like ads on your loader you want this to be shown for a certain amount of seconds so what we've done here is we're going to show the preloader preloader for two seconds minimum and we are going to change the project xml to have our own preloader and not the system one and to get this to work i'm going to have to close whatever server i've got running and restart that again so that will run um, and we want to use this loader, so we'll save it again to build. I think everything is correct. So if we now run the game, we should see a black screen for two seconds, which is this, before the game loads up. Let's try that again. There we go. So you saw a black screen for two seconds and the game loaded up. So basically, it's running what we have here, which is nothing. So let's put something in there. Let's override the um, public, public, public function create um, inside it. And we're gonna put some open FL text inside here. Uh, super create. And we're gonna import a few things. We're gonna Import fonts, the OpenFL one, not the Lime one, this one. 
copy the whole font, and we're going to say um, re register font. So this line is only useful if we have a custom font. And to add a custom font is, is a bit of a, a bit of a chore with some interesting syntax. So what you have to do is have this app symbol with font, and then um, load up the font. So where it's going to be? So in our case, it'll be assets. Uh, fonts, and then we'll have open sans regular dot ttf. Now, of course, you don't have to use a custom font. You can use whatever you font that's default to so Arial, Times New Roman, whatever. But I, I want to use open sans, so we're going to stick with that. And then we have to do class uh, custom font uh, custom with an M, and then it extends font. There you go. Okay, so now we have custom font, this custom font class. We can call this custom font here. So now this will load up whatever custom font we've got. Cool. So let's actually make this text. So text equals new text field. There you go. Let me get that with IntelliSense. Go from OpenFL. Um, and this is how, of course, you add text with OpenFL. Um, we're going to have some default formatting. We're, and we're going to import something else. This will be our last import. Um, text format. There we go. Open FL is again. And we're going to get open sans, which is what we call here, which is our custom font that we've registered. Um, and we want it to be 24 pixels size wise. And we want the color to be white. So that would be six Fs. Actually, I've made a mistake here. I don't need this black end here. We we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, of course, we can have two Fs for opacity as well. So that'd be 100% opacity. Um, but, but you don't need to. I don't think you need to. Let's leave it there. Cool. So now we've got the text that we want, which is the text field. And um, we're going to use the, we're going to have some default formatting for our text, which will use open sans, font size, color. Now let's. Um, Make sure we've got this M and bed. Um, bed fonts equals true. Um, as you can tell, I'm not an expert with OpenFL, so I've done some research beforehand. I will link up some of this stuff uh, in. Actually, I'll tell you what it is at the end. So I, there's an article I learned a lot of this stuff from, which I'll share with you after this video. But we'll continue for now. So I've already gone ahead and looked into Figma and positioned where I want this loading text to be. So I know that the, the width of it. Um, th would be 109 of the text based on the font size and the font that we're using. Um, so that'd be the width. And this is needed to, of course, use embedded fonts. Um, we want the text to actually say just loading for now. Yep. Put some semicolons here. This will not work. Let's put the X position. To 1138 and the y position to 668. Now you're probably looking at this thinking, why couldn't these settings have been set inside here? And I thought the same thing when I, when I first looked at it, but as you can see, um, it doesn't accept anything. And I can click into it to see more. Which is a bit annoying, but that's how it's been built, and that's how we're going to work with it. Where is this constructor? But anyway, take my word for it; it doesn't accept any um, any parameters. Okay, so for, the final thing we're going to do is add child, which is I guess equivalent to add in Pixel text, and then if we hit save, so all this is going to do is put uh, some loading text, I think, to the bottom. Uh, bottom left hand corner. All right, what's it saying? I forgot to have a variable. I guess I can have that here, right? Yeah, so this should now work. Okay, so now once we go into the game, do a hard refresh, we should see loading text there. So there we have it. We've got rid of the fixel branded um, 
go to the Flux branded loader, and we don't need this anymore, so we can get rid of that, or comment it out in our case. Um, and then once the game loads up or has finished being built, we can then run it and that's sharp for a few seconds, maybe even less than a few seconds, and then the game will load. So this has pretty much got rid of most of the pixel branding in the game, apart from this, but I'll talk about that later. Cool. Um, so the article that I'm going to link this to, or tell you more about, is one made by someone called Game Pooper. This is how I learned how to make a custom loader in Flixel. Like I said, I'm not an expert at OpenFL, so I had to read a lot of this, figure it out. And in my personal opinion, if you want the most sort of professional looking um, loader, I think all you need is um, a loading GIF. So like loading GIF in, in the bottom right, maybe even in the middle. That's pretty much it, and it could be whatever image you want. And this article goes through how to add images to it. So it's a, it's a similar way to add text. But for now, we want to keep our game simple, leave it with a simple loading text, and that's it. So yeah, we've pretty much finished making this game. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how to kind of wrap things up and export this for, for production, for release, basically. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.